Hey everybody, Dracos here with the latest from the minds of the EU LCS stats team. Now I want to take a look at time with a major lead and deficit. This is a new stat that looks unsurprisingly at gold leads and deficits in competitive games. Before we talk about why we'd use the stat, let's take a look at how we define major leads and deficits. A major lead is defined as a team holding 51.5% or more of the total gold in the game. And in turn, a major deficit is having 48.5% or less of the gold in the game. So if one team has a major lead, their opponent by default will be in a deficit. Note that major leads and deficits are no longer tracked past 40 minutes as players start to reach full build and gold difference matters less and less. So. Why is time with a major lead and deficit valuable? Well, we believe more it's a more meaningful way to evaluate how often a team is ahead or behind. It tells us more about how a team is performing than just win rate. And overall, it's a really solid metric for team performance. And of course, if you look at it being ahead by 3%, it doesn't sound like a whole lot, but you can see how much it scales up over the course of the game and how much it takes to have a major gold lead. This is how much gold it took on average to achieve a major lead across the EU and NALCS in the summer split. These numbers are going to change from game to game, but the range is actually quite small. And now with that information, you can see why we use percentages. The amount of gold in a game steadily increases, so it's going to take larger and larger amounts for a team to have a meaningful lead. For example, on average at 10 minutes, it takes 954 gold. At 20 minutes, it's 2,030. At 30 minutes, 3,157. At 44,227, just to give you some examples. But how do we use this? How do we put this stat into practice? Well, let's take an example from the EU LCS. It's generally agreed that Fnatic were the best team in the regular season. And while there may be some room for debate there, their time with the major lead definitely shows us just how dominant they were. 42% of their time was spent with a major lead. That is nuts. But even more impressive is how little time they spent in a major deficit, only 5.7%. Now to give you an interregional comparison, Immortals, the number one team in NA heading into playoffs, spent 19% of their time in a major deficit. Now, that's not to imply that Immortals are any worse, but it does show you exactly how one-sided Fnatic's regular season was. However, playoffs were a different story, and for there, it's probably best for us to look at G2. And if you had to identify one weakness for them in playoffs, it was their lackluster early game. G2 spent 25.6% of their time pre-20 minutes in a deficit. But from 20 to 40 minutes, you can see just how effective G2 were in the mid to late game. They spent 46.6% of their time with a major lead. This is particularly impressive because it very often meant coming back from those same major deficits we talked about in the early game, turning those into major leads, and that is a massive gold swing. Now, just using major lead and deficit, we have found evidence to support Fnatic's dominance in the regular season, G2's impressive control of the mid to late game, and honestly, that's just the beginning. If you want to check out the full story, you can head over to lolesports.com where you can find the complete breakdown for time with a major lead and deficit. And if you're craving for statistics, still is not satisfied, you can head over to Twitter and follow at EULCSStats for all of the latest information.